Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances of Glacier Shri Prabhupada. We welcome devotees to our morning Bhavatam class. This morning, we are very honored to have His Holiness Chandramani Swami from Chicago. Hare Krishna Maharaj, we are so happy that you are in the U.S. Please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj, of Glacier Shri Prabhupada. To Prabhupada, this is the first time I'm earlier than you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Maharaj. I'm sorry. <laughs> and Maharaj will be speaking on Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 7, Verse 49. And we are in the chapter entitled, The Son of Drona Punished. Maharaj is all yours, Maharaj. Thank you. Suta Uvacha Dharmyam Nayam Sakalunam Nirvalikam Samam Mahat Raja Dharma Suto Rajnya Pratyanadad Vachod Vijaha Translation Suta Goswami said, O Brahmanas, King Yudhisthira fully supported the statements of the Queen, which were in accordance with the religious principles and were justified, glorious, full of mercy and equity and without duplicity. Purport. Maharaj Yudhisthira was the son of Dharmaraj or Yamaraj. He fully supported the words of Queen Draupadi in asking Arjuna to release Asvatthama. One should not tolerate the, humilia the humiliation of a member of a great family. Arjuna and his family were indebted to the family of our Dronacharya because of Arjuna learning the military science from him. If ingratitude were shown to such a benevolent family, it would not be at all justified from the moral standpoint. The wife of Dronacharya, who was half body of the great soul, must be treated with compassion and she should not be put into grief because of her son's death. This is compassion, that is compassion. Such statements by Draupadi are without duplicity because actions should be taken with full knowledge. The feeling of equality was there because Draupadi spoke out of her personal experience. A barren woman cannot understand the grief of a mother. Draupadi was herself a mother, and therefore her calculation of the depth of Krippi's grief was quite to the point. It was glorious because she wanted to show proper respect to a great family. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaura Mani Pachari Nengir Vishesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya Deisitarine Pancha Kalpa Thiru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Vahe Vachya Vatitanam Bhagavai Vyo Vaishnavai Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara, Siva, Siddhi Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> so this uh, group of great souls along with Krishna trying to decide what to do with Asvatthama, who had committed such a heinous act. It was beyond description how vomitable his activities were. He uh, killed three young, five young boys while they were sleeping. Uh, there was no need for that. He wanted to somehow please uh, Duryodhana by killing the Pandavas, but he didn't kill the Pandavas. He killed their sons, who were just young boys, 12 years old. They were sleeping. So this is um, quite abominable. And obviously, a great punishment is due to such a personality. 
And we have an interesting dilemma here. And there are, we have Bhima, we have Arjun, we have Krishna, we have Draupadi, the mother of the children that were killed. And uh, we also now have Maharaj Yudhisthira entering into the, into the mix and all are giving their different opinions on what should be done. Krishna is withholding his opinion because he, he's waiting for Arjuna to make the right decision because he wants Arjuna to come to that right conclusion. He knows what he wants. Krishna knows what should be done, but he is not indicating it in a direct way, although he gives statements of what should be done, but then he changes. So it's interesting. Um, now here we're, we're getting into a little bit of the compassionate nature of, of Draupadi. She's a person who has suffered a lot um, in her previous life. Uh, she was, uh, you know, cursed by Lord Shiva, who <laughs> uh, was cursed by Durvasa Muni, and that curse was supported ultimately by Lord Shiva, who, of course, Durvasa Muni was an extension of that. But Draupadi had a very difficult life. And now uh, she's, their difficulty is even compounded with the death of her son. She had one son by each of the five Pandavas. <clears throat> and now she lost all of her family. And uh, except for the husbands, the husbands were still there. So now she uh, is part of this decision making. She's criticized previously as being a weak woman, sentimental, intelligence of a boy. And uh, so somehow she's minimized with her feelings previously. But now Yudhisthir, who is the most respected of the Pandavas in the sense that he is, it's it's interesting here. He's referred to the son of Dharmaraj or Yamaraj. So that is put by Srila Prabhupada to give indication of the power of the ability for Yudhisthira to make decisions. And that he is focused on ultimate religious principles. <laughs> And therefore, that indication shows that Yudhisthira's statement has great weight in making the decision. And so now, Draupadi, because Bhima, he's he's fixed. He he wants he wants him to be killed immediately. Krishna also says it, but then he withdraws it. He kind of like he's a little bit. Uh, uh, what we see equivocal about what should be done <laughs> because he's playing that role so people can come to the right decision. He's pointing out different angles of vision. And now here we have Draupadi. And uh, she is very empathetic she sees I'm suffering, I'm a mother, I lost my children. Now the mother of Asvatama, creepy, uh, she is the wife of our Guru Maharaj, Dronatwarya, who has given military science to Arjun. So and he is respectable. He is although he is in the role of a Kshatriya, he is actually a Brahmana. Dronacharya is a Brahmana.
Hare Krishna devotees, we just missed Chandramali Swami because of his internet connection in Chicago. Oh, he's back up. There we go. Maharaj, you're on mute, Maharaj. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we lost the connection for a few minutes. So, um, and she's very em empathetic and she doesn't want Creepy to suffer in the same way. And therefore, she wants to, she also makes the point that, uh, you know, he is uh, our teacher also. Uh, his father is our teacher, Dronacharya. Um, it's interesting, we see the soft-heartedness of, of Draupadi. This is quite amazing. Generally, when something like that happens to a person, they start to think that the, the perpetrator of such horrible acts should definitely be punished and punished in the same way. But here, she's not thinking like that. She's thinking in terms of the suffering that will cause the family members if he is killed. <laughs> um, this, is a, this is a very high elevated quality of a Vaishnava. Uh, it says that a Vaishnava, when a Vaishnava sees someone happy, they also they share that happiness. And when they see someone suffering, they feel in the same way. Vaishnava therefore preaches based on this principle that people are suffering and that that suffering is also being felt in a way that it turns into a type of compassion and well actually compassion itself and that compassion motivates one to want to make a difference to want to help rather than to want to find some vengefulness. Sometimes, you know, sometimes devotees will say, well, the karmis, they should suffer because they committed so many sinful activities. They're simply getting the reactions of what, the, what, what is due to them. And that is true. But a devotee thinks, well, but actually, you know, because I have received the mercy of my spiritual master, and therefore I have become connected to devotional service, I'm getting free from the reactions of my past sinful activities. I'm also uh, feeling happy. My suffering is becoming less. The devotee emphasizes or empathizes in the same way and thinks, well, therefore we should share this good fortune with others. And that is compassion. So even though a person deserves to suffer because of their activities, and that's the nature of material energy, the material energy, as Srila Prabhupada describes, gives the results of pious activities and gives the results of impious activities. So especially today, people are very impious. And so there's a lot of suffering coming on, coming down in different forms because of sinful activities illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating and gambling and various types of cheating and lying in the name of uh, putting forth one's own uh, selfish desires. And people are suffering because of that <laughs> and it's going on. But a devotee thinks, if somehow or other I can relieve someone's suffering by giving, giving them a chance to become Krishna consciousness, that will be a great service, not only to them, but also to my spiritual master who has come on behalf of the Lord to help relieve the suffering. So to, if I can assist my spiritual master in, in relieving the sufferings of the conditioned souls by preaching Krishna consciousness or in some way reaching out to them in a way that they can, their life will be benefited by uh, by what I have to offer them. In other words, bring them closer to Krishna. So the devotee thinks like that. Like that. So, yeah, we see, uh, <clears throat> we have the example of Lord Jesus Christ, although he was being persecuted and 
uh, in so many different ways. He was praying to the Lord to forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. He was praying that they, they don't know what they're doing. Please forgive them, my dear Lord. Now here's an example of one's own suffering coming by way of a, a group of persons, and that person is praying. Srila Haridas Thakur was doing the same thing when he was uh, being beaten by in 22 marketplaces. And his uh, executioners were you know, instructed that he should not come back with any breath left. And they were determined to, to end his life. But he was simply chanting the holy names of the Lord and at the same time praying to the, to the Lord to forgive them and actually give them Krishna consciousness. Uh, when this was going on, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became very upset seeing his devotee being uh, suffering in so many ways that the Lord was about to kill these two executed executioners and the people around were also you know begging these executioners to stop but but the lord he couldn't do anything because of the prayers by shila haridas Thakur were so powerful the lord explained that my chakra does not come off my hand because of the your compassionate prayers praying for them to become devotees of the lord and forgive them for their their offenses against you and then later on uh, and lord chaitanya said well because even though i i can't do anything in that way he protected haridas by putting his body over haridas and accepting the beatings himself so the lord was so compassionate to his pure devotee that he was willing to undergo some difficulty just to show compassion to his devotee. So we see the devotee is undergoing difficulty to show compassion to the fallen souls. So in this age of Kali, it is very difficult to preach Krishna consciousness because people don't want it. <laughs> they want sense gratification. or well, they want something in the name of spiritual life that will give them more more some more forms of sense gratification they mix everything together the goal is sense gratification but a devotee knows that uh, despite the difficulties despite the difficulties um still preaching must go on because that is the mission of chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, he's Karuna avatar, Namo Maha Vandanaya, Krishna Prema Padayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Goda Tristana Maha. He is very compassionate to the fallen conditioned souls and he's always thinking how to deliver them. The example was Jagai and Marai, who received the special mercy of the Lord, although they had committed so many heinous activities that even Yamaraj could not calculate or keep count of all of the activities by Jagai and Marai. But the Lord uh, forgave them and gave them entrance into the association of devotees. And later on, they actually became great devotees of the Lord. So we see how Lord Chaitanya's compassion. When Krishna was here, those who were mimical were uh, were ostracized were thrown out were, were killed <laughs> the ones that tried to hurt the devotees or the ones that tried to attack krishna they were killed by krishna so but lord chaitanya he is krishna himself she krishna chaitanya radha krishna or nohi anya he is radharani's compassionate nature in the body of krishna who appears as a devotee in this world to show compassion to the fallen conditioned souls and his uh, mercy is unlimited Srila Prabhupada would somehow uh, become overwhelmed with emotion many times when he would speak about the, the compassionate nature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and how he was so forgiving and so eagerly arranging for the fallen conditioned souls to somehow or other get the mercy where they could actually become devotees of the Lord. 
So he is called Karuna avatar. He is the most merciful. And he is the most merciful of all manifestations. And us, we are followers in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and our spiritual master, his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Undergo underwent many many sufferings so he could preach Krishna consciousness. I was just reading from that book by Giriraj Swami. I'll build you a temple. How Srila Prabhupada, his health was so bad <laughs> he couldn't. That he needed help to stand up. This was in the last year, 1977. Still, he was attending programs, meeting important people, and preaching Krishna consciousness to the point where when it became impossible he kept he kept going until it became ultimately impossible to continue so that's uh, that's the nature of a great soul they uh, put their own comforts aside their own desires aside their own feelings aside and they just want to uh, uh, act on behalf of the Supreme Lord by showing compassion to the fallen conditioned souls. So sometimes we don't have compassion and therefore what, what will motivate someone to show compassion is that this is coming down from the great, from the Lord himself and then ultimately the great souls. So as a service to these great souls who are by nature compassionate, we offer our, our our time and our energy to try to somehow or other find ways to reach the fallen conditioned souls with this message and most of the time they don't want it anyway <laughs> but somehow we have to figure out ways to give it to them anyway it's more like the example is given a little child is as required by the doctor to receive medicine and the medicine is not very tasty and the child is refusing. But the mother knows that the med this is the only way that the child will be cured from the disease and the medicine must be given. And so she has to find, a, find ways by which she can convince the child or force the child in many cases to take the medicine. So uh, this is the, the situation. But um, but to fast forward this idea a little bit to the present time is that because of a lot of difficulties that are coming down in the social environment and the political environment in, in the economic environment with no relief in sight, only increase of these uh, difficulties, uh, people are more and more uh, open and looking for uh, opportunities to find some solution or some re res respite or some peace of mind. And so uh, therefore preaching right now is more very, very, very good. Very, very good. Uh, and uh, whether it's preaching or just reaching out to uh, show some concern to someone by giving them a book or giving them a, some instructions about chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. If we travel around, if we, when we're traveling, we meet people, it's not very hard to somehow or other strike up a conversation and, and uh, somehow, and sometimes people come up to you and they ask, well, who are you? What are you, why are you dressed like that? What's your activities? So we have uh, many opportunities, especially nowadays, with the uh, situation becoming more and more calamitous. We don't need that in order to preach, but it's an impetus for the conditioned souls to become more open to what we have. Um, Prabhupada said, material energy is always, you know, uh, giving difficulty to the conditioned souls. There's no, there's no need to uh, <laughs> wait for it to become impossible. It is happening all the time. <laughs> but when it becomes more and more obvious, then um, it's an inspiration for devotees to become more enthusiastic 
to go out and uh, distribute books, preach, uh, distribute the holy name, have Harinam Sankirtans, or have classes, um, discussion groups. In other words, some way or other, keep, turn the nectar of Krishna consciousness where it will uh, include others so they can also take part and benefit. So Draupadi, she's very, uh, very merciful. A very compassionate, suffering her own uh, mistreatment, her own uh, emotional uh, catastrophe. She's pushing it all aside and only thinking this should not happen to to a, someone else. Mm -hmm. Now that that obviously is a very very high level of spiritual. Uh, we have the example of um, which ha what happened in uh, with the uh, the Amish community many years ago. One man who was the milkman who was delivering milk to the Amish community, one of their schools. He came in and he killed a lot of the kids. They were they were children. They were all girls too. He killed a whole bunch of girls for no reason. And then, of course, he was apprehended. But the, uh, the parents in the Am Amish community wanted to, wanted to forgive him. This was really, really amazing to see that in how this crazy guy he just came in. There's a beautiful story about that, and that's written also, documented, on how he just, for no no reason at all, there was none, no reason, just his own, you know, anger exploded in a, in a certain direction towards these children. And uh, the Amish community uh, prayed for him and forgave him. And that's a beautiful story that was written. I think there was even a book written about that. But I know many articles were written about that. I had the good fortune two years ago, just before the lockdown, this was in October of uh, 2019, to go with a group of devotees from Gita Nagari to the Amish community. And uh, we spent about six or seven hours just spending time with them, talking to them. And we found that, that they're very, very uh, God conscious, very compassionate and kind towards others, very insulated in how they live their life, free from all of the technical uh, gadgets that we have, including automobiles and television sets and all of these things. So um, I was really uh, enlightened in a very wonderful way to, to meet such pe people who, are, who had such wonderful character. So then I understood a little bit more uh, reflecting on the incident that had happened with this man killing many of their children. Okay, so we learn here that compassion is the heart of bhakti. <laughs> compassion includes concern, it includes forgiveness, it includes uh, the element of uh, wanting the best for someone. Okay, so we get a little insight of this very, very wonderful quality. And it's based on another quality, which is called, in this case, it's called forgiveness. It says that out of all of the qualities of a Vaishnava, the most brahminical of all of the qualities is the quality of forgiving when there is some transgression. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you so much, Mar. Such a really deep class, lots of points of compassion.
lots of examples. Thank you for sharing so much, giving us an enlightened class. If there are any questions from devotees, uh, please uh, do raise your hand or you can jump in. I will um, at, you know, um, have you ask your question. I'm just going down the list here. I don't have my daughters with me to help me um, man, uh, manage it, so it's on me. So I'm a little bit slow. Mars, while the other devotees are thinking, Marge, I have a question. And in your class earlier, you were saying, you know, at the mood of a disciple is whenever we look at the karmis rather than thinking of them, oh, you've fallen, this and that, is that we should think how we are blessed by the mercy of our spiritual master. That we, uh, you know, we, get, we are engaged in devotional service, free from sinful activities, and so on and so forth. March as a disciple, how can we not take that mercy for granted? <laughs> when we, um, when we uh, actually become enthusiastic to become more and more Krishna conscious, because there's so much more that can be gained by the compassion that's been offered to us. So when we appreciate the gift, that's a way and not taking advantage of the fact that we have received the gift. So I guess the, it comes back again to the same principle. When you give it to others, then you'll also appreciate it more yourselves, yourself. You know, that mood of compassion towards others helps us to appreciate the, the value of the gift. Another way is to read the books and understand deeper what we have. We have a chance, um, a, a wonderful chance to solve all problems automatically by one particular focus, and that is becoming a devotee of the Lord. We can solve all problems. Thank you, you Maharaj. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Maharaj. When, when one is Krishna consciousness, conscious, there's, there's no problem. <laughs> Becoming enthusiastic. Thank you, Maharaj. Mansi and Diptesh Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, thank you for this. Uh, wonderful verse and the explanation and also the uh, the pastime for the Amish uh, community. I think this is such a wonderful and strong uh, character uh, and values that we have to develop as Vaishnavas. Maharaj, I have a question um, in regards to compassion. When can compassion lead into sentimentalism or is there a difference? Because Yeah, what... yeah there is. When something else is needed, and that and that is not that that is not applied, and some sentiment is replaced with that, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Prabhupada tells this story. There was one young boy. His mother died, and his father had already died before then, so he had no. No one to take care of him. He was a young boy. He was very young. So his auntie, she took the responsibility of raising the boy. So she raised the boy. Now the boy was quite mischievous. And he would like to steal things. And so he would go out and steal things and bring them. And she wouldn't, uh, she would, she wasn't feeling that she should chastise him for doing that she just let it go on thinking that you know i don't want to make him unhappy by chastising him she was feeling like this misplaced sentiment that she uh, uh didn't want to do anything to make the boy unhappy although the boy was doing the wrong thing she didn't want to take the position of of correcting him and she didn't if she did it was only mild and it had no effect. And so the boy continued to do that. And as he grew up, it became greater and greater. And then at one point, he killed somebody. And then he was caught and he was brought before the judge. He was given a death sentence. His aunt, auntie was in the courtroom 
and she's crying now. She's very overwhelmed with emotion that the boy is now going to be, you know, executed. So before that happens, the, the boy says to the judge, can I spend a few moments with my auntie? And the judge granted it. So he went over. It was auntie who was there and she was crying. And he, he came really close to her, like to whisper something into her ear. But rather than doing that, he bit her ear really hard. And she jumped back and feeling the pain. And he said, and then he, then he spoke. He said, now you are crying, but now it's too late. If you would have taught me what was right, you wouldn't be crying today, nor will I be losing my life. Misplaced sentiment. The boy needed to be corrected. He needed to be punished and corrected in a way that would, would curtail his wrong activities, but she didn't do that out of misplaced sentiment. And because of that, the boy and her suffered later on. Rapa tells another story similar to that, but uh, I think this story has a, has a good amount of depth to it. <laughs> so that is misplaced sentiment. It goes on as compassion, but it's not. I guess a better story is the second one, where this one was also good. One little boy, he had typhoid fever, and his doctor told him and his mother, don't feed him anything if he could die if he eats. <clears throat> the boy was really young. He was about three or four years old. So the boy's crying. He wants something to eat. He's hungry, but the mother's refusing because he, she knows that to give him something to eat is, uh, you know, it could cause him to become worse or maybe even die. And so one day she had to leave and she left the, her son in the care of his older sister. The girl was about 11 years old. And she instructed her, if he's crying, he wants something to eat, don't feed him. It's not good for him. He, he could get worse. So she instructed her daughter and then she left. And then uh, the daughter is listening. Now the boy's calling out, give me some paratas. I want paratas. So the, the girl forgets about what her mother says and she starts cooking paradas and gives it to her little son and the boy eats it. The mother comes home and she sees what's happened. She's really angry at the daughter and she starts chastising the daughter and the daughter's crying for getting scolded by her mother. And uh, she, the daughter's thinking, oh, I, all I wanted to do was feed my little brother. He was hungry. So misplaced sentiment, misplaced sentiment. When something else is required in order to deal with the situation, but because of sentiment it is not given, then that is the answer to your question. Thank you, Maharaj. Is that clear? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. This has helped. Yeah. These exam these two stories are told by Srila Prabhupada. And both of them were real life stories during the time of Prabhupada growing up in Calcutta. So mm -hmm. he tells he tells these stories from his own experience. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. That was a nice question, Prabhu. Thank you so much for asking. Really nice question. Yeah. Vrindavan Nath Prabhu, you can go with your question. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. We accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Guru Maharaj, my question is like uh, when we read all these pastimes and stories uh, about tolerance, compassion, it really like looks like where we are. It uh, like feel like we are nowhere. But <laughs> and. Uh, it's like, yes, normally we discuss that, yes, when we chant more and more seriously, when we develop and 
have more and strong faith in Krishna, hopefully these qualities will develop. But still, Guru Maharaj, how to really focus in developing these? This is they are so good quality, but very difficult when it comes in practical life. When somebody really hurting, immediately our inside things comes out. Two ways: one is make advancement in Krishna consciousness. The more you make advancement, the more these qualities become part of your character. And the other way is I don't feel like that, but my spiritual master. Uh, Shila Prabhupada, he's 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 in that mood, so let me serve him by assisting him in that same mood. That's, we take on the compassion compassionate mood of our spiritual master, and we serve in that same way. And then it will also, if we continue to do that, it will also start to develop within us. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So maybe we should have this as a focus plus also as a service mode. That this is a service building yeah. this voltage. I mean, we have compassionate towards our family members when something happens to them, but we have to have that broad vision where actually all living entities are our family members because all living entities are parts and parcels of Krishna. Take it from that point of view. We show compassion to the immediate, the immediate persons with uh, within our life. But why not take it onto the spiritual platform? <laughs> Where everyone is related, because ultimately we only have one father. And that's Krishna. Aham <laughs> bija pita. Krishna says in the. Bhagavad Gita. I am the seed giving father of all living entities. All, all living entities are sons of the Lord. So therefore, if we're all sons, well, we're all related to each other as family members on the spiritual platform. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yes, whole world is our family, Prabhupada family. So we should try to. Yeah, all living entities, even the dogs and mosquitoes, and <laughs> they're all they're all parts and parcels of Krishna. The, ver the verse is Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmani Gavi Hastani Suni Chaiva Sapake Champandita Samadarshana. Uh bring up that verse. Uh Mother Anasuya, it's 518 in the Bhagavad Gita. Maharaj, you said Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, 518. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. So the translation, the humble sage by virtue of true knowledge sees it with equal vision, a learned and gentle Brahman, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater outcast. A Krishna conscious person does not make a distinction between, between species or castes. The bodies are, are material productions of different modes, but the soul and the super soul with the same are within the body are of the same spiritual quality. Krishna is in the heart of all living entities, and all living entities are part and parcel of Krishna. It's really good, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. I was actually uh, listening to one uh, one Mataji class where she gave very nice analogy, Guru Maharaj, not related to compassion, but uh, she mentioned that uh, uh, in this world. When somebody is hurting us, uh, we know that uh, uh, if somebody is having mental problem, we normally don't mind, even if they give any trouble to us or they say something, we ignore. So if we feel that everybody is in this Maya, material world, in some illusion, including ourselves, so they are also reacting badly. It's just like, because 
they are in that illusion. So we should just try to avoid and ignore these things. So I think, yeah, as you're rightly yeah. saying. Yeah, that was the example that we gave with Lord Jesus Christ. He was forgiving them because he, he said they, they don't really know what they're doing. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Very nice question. Other questions from devotees? Um, clarification, uh, please do um, raise your hand. I'm trying to go down the list here. Um, Marge, the, the question, um, the verse that we were um, addressing just now, 1746, there's one line, and I would like to go back to it, if that's okay with you, Marge, because one, I want to... Yeah, the one... 49, right? 40, yes, yes, 49, sorry. There's a verse, that's a line by Sri Prabhupada where he was saying, one should not tolerate the humiliation of a member of a great family. And as you mentioned earlier, that we are one family and our, and our only father is Krishna. And even though in ISKCON, it's, you know, Prabhupada has built a, a house that the whole world can live in. And yet we have, you know, different spiritual masters. Therefore, there are, you know, they're like almost like pockets. How can we overcome the mentality of the, you know, we are gurus of different disciples and look at ourselves as a great family, one big family, and still practice tolerance. No, we are one great family. If, if we, if, you know, you take the Indian family, you have the, the brothers, they say there's five brothers in the family, and they all have their wives and they all have their children. They're all called cousin brothers. It's not like, well, my father is, you know, my father and your father is your father. We have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> so you see that in the Indian family, it's very much uh, a focus that the, the sisters and the brothers all have their own, they're all grown up, they're all married, they all have their families. And all of the children are all cousin brothers, and they relate to each other in that in that same way. That's how it's seen. That's, but if we think, well, my guru and your guru, we don't understand that that we're all related to Srila Prabhupada, who who's uh, our spiritual master is simply uh, a product or a son of. Srila Prabhupada, that's all. We're all related to Prabhupada. Prabhupada is the, you might say, the grandfather. And we have our different fathers. And we are different children of these different fathers who have one the same grandfather. And uh, therefore, we're all related to in, in, on a spiritual platform. Even Prabhupada even said that. <laughs> he said... Uh, he said, you know, I, uh, I gave up my wife, I gave up my family. Now I have, now I have big family. I have 300 children with no wife. <laughs> he was saying that speaking from the heart. That's really nice, Marsh. Thank you for sharing that wonderful past and by Shri Prabhupada. That's really sweet. Other questions from devotees? This is a really powerful topic, compassion. As you're speaking of compassion, Marge, I was thinking about a book that I'm yet to read. And I, um, it's by Satrup Maharaj, The Vaishnav Compassion. I think he wrote a book. Yeah, there's two books. There's one by uh, my god sister, Sukhava. She also wrote a book on compassion. You know, Sukhavaha from Nurandavan. Oh, I have that. Yes, yes, yes. You're right, Maharaj. Yes. That's really, she did a wonderful presentation. Interesting. Many good points. 
Yes, actually, I do. I, I remember buying that book. I'm looking for it. I, I remember buying that book from her. Yes. Mother Sukavaha, yes. La, um, Mother Lavanya, please ask your question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All goes to Srila Prabhupada, all goes to your devotees. Um, Guru Maharaj, uh, thank you for answering these questions. Even I had the uh, same questions as Deepesh Prabhu and Vrindavanath Prabhu. Um, I was just wondering, um, I don't have any particular question, but I was just thinking like, uh, how much compassionate uh, is uh, Draupadi? Um, she can forgive, uh, um, she can forgive the um, Ashwatthama, um, even though you know, he killed um, all her sons. So um, that is nearly an elevated position she is in. And uh, um, um, I was just uh, meditating on that, uh, Guru Maharaj. Um, and just, uh, I wanted to ask like, how to develop these qualities, um, as you yeah. explained very well with the examples. And um, thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, very nice. Yeah. We can also, do it from another angle we can do it from the reverse if we are in a situation where someone shows us compassion we are very grateful for that and if someone doesn't show us compassion where, where there could have been you know, something then we have to undergo the difficulties and so we think well maybe <clears throat> i would not like to suffer why should I cause another one to suffer? Or be vengeful? It's very difficult. We can speak very nicely about this quality and say so many lofty things, but when we're put into that situation, then that's the real test. <laughs> and then you have to see how much you can depend on Krishna, how much you're, what is the quality of your bhakti. In some cases, the right thing is to punish. And, and uh, uh, Asvatthama will get punished. He does get punished. In fact, the punishment that Asvatthama gets is worse than death. Yeah. To kill him would have been the easiest thing and the best, probably the, the most compassionate thing they could have did for him. But they didn't. They just, you know, disfigured his, and then they sent him out. Now, because he had committed, you know, you know, what they call it, um, hatya, something, child hatya. Hatya means killing, killing children. Um, he developed, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you the future life of Asvatthama. You always wonder what happened to him. He was a person that was cursed not to die. He, he, the curse was given to him that he could not die. He would be one of the Chiranjivans those who never died, but he would be in an, a negative uh, category of Chiranjivans. He, um, he developed a bad odor all over his body as a result of his heinous act, and he could not associate with anyone. And therefore, he wandered the earth without any association for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. He is still living today and he is in the area of Varsana. People see him and, but you know, he doesn't associate with anyone. He has come in contact with Krishna and he's chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra right now. And he's been chanting that for many, for many, many years. I don't know how long. Soon, all the sinful actions of his heinous crimes will be, you know, nullified. And he will leave his body and take birth as one of the Saptarishis, which are the seven Rishis that 
circumambulate the pole star. There are seven rishis that circumambulate the pole star. The pole star is where Lord Vishnu resides on the island of Swetadweep. Swetadweep is the island on the pole star where the Lord resides within this material universe. So he will attain the position of a septa shapta rishi, a great soul, and he will have a planet that will evolve around the pole star. He will be one of seven planets of great rishis. So we have a little bit of, you know, prophecy, understanding what will his future be. Right now, he's in the area of, he's still on the planet, he's in the area of uh, Barsana, and um, he's like a madman who lives in the wild, and, um, but he chants the Lord's name constantly. This is a little bit about the present situation of Aswatam. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Guru Maharaj. I didn't know all of this. Thank you so much. <laughs> Beautiful, Maharaj. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you for asking that question, Lavani Mataji. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prakshit has a question. Go ahead. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. So, all glory to Shri Prabhupada. Um, Thank you for the class. In this last bit that you're talking about what's going to happen to Ashatam, uh, very, 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 very interesting. I heard a little bit of it sometime in 1998 when Maharaj, uh, Bhakti Jaya sent the two of us, and and myself, to, to Alachua. And when one of your god brothers also said something to, and added a few more things. So, so I heard it, and I didn't know as much of it as you've added now, so it didn't ask more. Um, that was not the reason I had my hand up, but... Um, my hands, well, I have my hand up because of the, uh, this text translation. Um, Maharaj Yudhi still fully supported the statements of the Queen, which were in accordance with the principles of religions and were justified, glorious, full of mercy and equity and without duplicity. The last point here, without duplicity, was what um, what's caused me to want to ask this question. Because I know now that the principles of religion, austerity is uh, compromised heavily, um, cleanliness is compromised, mercy is compromised, and it's truth now that's, that's uh, according to the Shastra, is being contested in the mind of speaking. And this whole duplicity thing, hmm, even sometimes the Buddhists get into that situation. Sometimes they tell one story depending on who they're talking to, and another story depending on who they're talking to. So what advice can you give, you know, for this particular <laughs> Maya to, to be, now, but you know, I actually literally, you know, had an issue with GBC uh, position. I won't name one particular, uh, that place, but he actually stopped being GBC of a particular place in this, on this planet because of duplicity. He took it that seriously. Uh, <laughs> so so okay. can you help? <laughs> yeah. Um, Anasuya, go to Bhagavad Gita, chapter 17, verse number 16. Oh, wonderful. Yes, Maharaj. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 17, 17 verse 16. 16, Maharaj, you said? Yeah, I think that's it. Mm. Mm. Okay, now keep going down. That's that's 16. Um, maybe... This one, Maharaj, is 16, yes. Go to the next verse, Maharaj. No, there's another one, another verse. Go to... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think whether it's before this verse or uh, I think uh, go to the later verses, maybe 17, 18. Let's see what it says here. Keep going. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, go back. I think I we it's the other way. Okay, Marsh, no problem. Yeah, go before. Uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, there you go. There you go. There you go, uh, Rickshit. Mm, austerity of speech. Okay. <laughs> that answers the question there. Consists in speaking words that are truthful, pleasing, beneficial, and not agitating to others, and also regularly reciting Vedic literatures. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the solution. And then you have Prabhupada's explanation here. 
that's, that's, uh, talk should be pleasurable to the ear. Mm -hmm. That's seventeen fifteen. Seventeen. What is it? Seventeen fifteen. Seventeen or? seventeen fifteen, Maharaj. Yeah. Okay. Stability of speech. <laughs> Marsh, can I ask a question on this purport? It's really, I, I'm, I'm, it's, it's just, it's really powerful. Here, Shri Prabhupada says, when a teacher speaks, he can speak the truth for the instruction of his students. But such a teacher should not speak to those who are not his students, if he will agitate their minds. Can you shed some light on that, Marsh? Can you elaborate I think on that? that? I think it's uh, quite... Yeah, because they haven't committed themselves to that person. And therefore, um, because of that lack of commitment, that um, they, won't ex they won't accept. When you become a disciple, then you are a duty bound to accept what the teacher says. <laughs> but these people are not duty bound, so they can simply reject it. And it was going to agitate their minds. They then then they will just become more mimical. That's all. Thank you, yeah. Maharaj. The relationship is not there. Mm -hmm. One such impriyam, such imbruyam. One should speak truthfully and beneficially and avoid speech that offends. Prabhupada had to deal with that when the devotees found, gave criticism to the spiritual master of uh, uh, Sumati Marariji, who was Balava Acharya. And she became offended because the devotees had written an article uh, speaking that he was, you know, he had. Uh, um, he had certain things and Lord Chaitanya rejected it and ignored him. So poor Lord Chaitanya didn't want to hear from Balabacharya. Now, when Surat Samati Moriji, Marariji became, uh, I just read a long discussion based on that. And Prabhupada defended the devotees because the devotees had spoken from scripture. But he also sided with, uh, or he he uh, felt some concern towards Sumati Maharaji by explaining that these devotees are young and they don't know how to present things in the proper way. And therefore, he was apologizing for the way they presented the article. Although what they said was correct, but the how they presented it caused some agitation. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for clarifying and shedding light on that. Mm -hmm. Want to make ask devotees if there are other questions, um, any clarification, any points, uh, please do raise your hand. I'm just going down the list of the participants here so that I don't miss anybody. Okay, if there isn't, we thank you all for joining us and thank you so much, Marsh, for a wonderful, wonderful class. And we are so happy you're in US and we hope that you will swing by Pennsylvania from Chicago. If that's in your schedule, Marsh, um, I will I'll contact you very soon. Thank you, Marsh, for your mercy. I look forward to hearing from you Marge. thank you i have some some service for you <laughs> oh hey i am at That's your even service better. <laughs> i'm at your service Marge. at your service <laughs> it'll be very soon maybe tomorrow <laughs> yes Marge, you can contact me no problem Marge. i'm at your service <laughs> And we thank the devotees for joining us. Vancha Kapri Vyascha Kripas in the Bevacha. Patitanam Pavanebio Vaishnavebio Namo Namaha. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you very much for holding this wonderful discussion. It's always such an interesting discussion with this group, with your particular group. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marsh, for all your mercy. And we look forward to more mercy from you. Hare Krishna.
Glories to you. All glories to you and glories to the Father. Yeah, I have a little bit of a picture. Yeah, I have a little bit of a picture.